Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK. And as you can probably tell by, I've got a little bit of a tan going on. I had a holiday, a lovely holiday down in the south of France, but because the cases have increased there, as I've come back, I have to self isolate for the next two weeks. So not a lot of things <laughs> on my agenda. So I thought I would come back today with a new video of looking at some alternative medical news. Now this isn't alternative medicine news, this is alternative medical news. This is from Unilad. Uh, I actually like Unilad, they've shared a lot of my videos in the past. Um, and they've got this somewhat amusing headline, definitely grabs the attention, but it does have some serious points to it. People urge to wear masks and avoid kissing during sex to stop coronavirus spread. <laughs> I love that this doesn't sort of say who, so immediately you might think, hang on a minute, do I need to wear a mask and stop kissing during sex? Well, not if you're living with your partner, but I can imagine some lazy people just reading the headlines really quickly and then thinking they have to have, wear a mask when they go to bed with their loved one. <laughs> you know, they might be into that stuff. So a sexual health charity has urged people to wear face masks and to avoid kissing during sex to help prevent the spread of coronavirus. I have so many questions. In recent months, as people across the UK have been advised to stay indoors and avoid mixing with other household, with legislation at one point making it illegal to have sex in your own home with a person from another household, the number of people seeking new sexual partners has plummeted. So much so, in fact, that research from the Terence Higgins Trust, the UK's leading HIV and sexual health charity, very good charity, by the way, reducing the stigma of HIV. I still see a lot of people have these um, misinformation about HIV. It has a normal life expectancy, given the fantastic medications are available. A lot of people don't realize that. Anyway, the charity found that 84% of people had abstained from sex outside of their immediate household because of the restrictions. Well, that makes sense. I mean, that's what the restrictions were stopping. So that's kind of a good statistic, but I know what they're saying. Um, the Terence Higgins Trust, and I think a lot of charities, you know, like drugs charities as well, can often, say stuff that may be in conflict with the government advice because they almost know people are going to break the rules but it's about giving good advice and so people understand the risks of what they're doing if they do that and while that's obviously been the right thing to do in order to protect lives and prevent the spread of a life-threatening virus the terence higgins trust has said it's no longer realistic to ask people to completely abstain from sex Okay, so as a solution, the charity has published guidelines on how to have safe sex while managing the risk of coronavirus, stressing the fact that there are always ways to make your sex as safe as possible. Not kissing, wearing a face mask during sex, and favoring positions where you're not face to face. Why is that funny? It's such a childish thing, isn't it? It sort of reminds me of that thing in uh, American Pie with your parents talking about sex. That's what I'm getting from this. Come in, come in. Oh, Jim, you're here. These are all ways you can reduce your risk of catching or passing on coronavirus according to the charity's guidelines. Yeah, so let's, <laughs> let's basically just be clear. You know, in your own household, it's absolutely fine. But also we have this idea of a support bubble in the UK where two households can effectively bubble together, meaning they can be treated as one household, so live in separate addresses, but see each other, which has been great for people who are kind of living alone and or just need some sort of social output. So I would suggest if you're having a sexual relation with someone, it, it should probably be someone within your bubble. But I guess they're saying that that's not possible for everyone because, you know, the people you socialize with isn't necessarily the person you want to have sex with. I'm guessing that's what the, the charity are getting at. Sexual partners are also advised to wash their hands for 20 seconds before and after sex to help reduce the risk. With the Terence Higgins Trust advising people to have one regular partner or to limit the number of sexual partners you have. I mean, I think that's just good advice anyway. The washing your hands thing is funny because let's just remind ourselves of the importance of that. We've kind of, I think, got caught up in the idea of face masks sort of being the savior in this pandemic. Everything is about face masks. But the most important things are the simpler things. It is the social distancing. It is the washing the hands. It is not touching your face. I mean, that is 
exactly how the virus spreads. The masks are kind of the second layer on. You know, if we're doing all the first things, the masks aren't gonna do a hell of a lot. And the difficulty with sex is you kind of need to do <laughs> all of the first things. So it's not like you can, you have to kind of touch someone with your hands, you have to kind of be within two meters of them. I'm sure there's gonna be some comment about someone being able to have sex from two meters away, but we'll ignore that. So having sex is a super high risk of spreading the virus to someone. So technically wearing a mask and not kissing during sex may reduce the risk, but you can argue, is it even worth having sex if it's you know basically kind of very sterile like this? And also how much is it reducing, reducing the risk? Probably not a great deal. Potential sexual partners are encouraged to discuss coronavirus and to ask if the person they're sleeping with or anyone in their household has had symptoms or tested positive within the past two weeks. With those people who have had symptoms being advised against having sex completely, absolutely right. Really good advice and just good advice in terms of any kind of sexual health as well, being open and honest, talking about any symptoms you've had. Dr. Michael Brady, the medical director at Terence Higgins Trust said, sex is a very important part of life. Some would say even integral to life. It's part of the creation of life. And asking people to avoid sex indefinitely is not realistic. That's why as the COVID-19 pandemic continues, we all need to find ways to balance our need for sex and intimacy with the risks of the spread of COVID-19. Sounds very sensible. The charity did state that regardless of all the advice above, the best sexual partner during the pandemic is still yourself or somebody you live with, or as I alluded to before, someone that is in your bubble. So um, two households that can effectively operate as one household, but in different addresses. Masturbation, using sex toys and phone or cam sex are the safest options as they can be done without being in close proximity to anyone else, the guidance reads. Well, I mean, we're finding technology helping out in lots of different ways. Maybe this is another way as well. Is this quite an artificial way to deal with a natural problem? It's such a difficult thing to say because I think this guideline is coming from a really, really good place. And I think they're almost letting people know it's acceptable to do these things. And the chariot are doing their job in highlighting the importance of sexual health and the difficulty around it at this time. Um, Dr. Bradley goes on to say that abstaining from sex is still the best way to protect yourself from coronavirus. And don't forget as well, protecting other people. So the sacrifices we're making are around, not just about us, because we might not have individually a huge risk, but we're stopping the spread so we might not pass it on to other people. And obviously we're more likely to pass it on to our loved ones because they're the ones we're going to see. and. Um, you know, the ones we're gonna be close to as well. Although this article opened with the more impractical and, shall I say, kind of comedy aspects of this, because everyone imagines having sex with someone with a mask on, not kissing them <laughs> in some kind of non-face-to-face -face position. I think the practical advice really is to have one sexual partner, preferably one that's kind of in your bubble, so one that also only has a sexual relationship with you. And both of you are following the national guidelines, so social distancing when you're going out, um, washing your hands regularly and not touching your face so you're unlikely to spread it to each other when you do have sex. I'll leave a full link to this article so you can read it for yourselves and a link to the actual guidelines from the Terence Higgins Trust. So there you have it, our first medical news sorted. I'll be back soon with some more videos. I'm in lockdown for two weeks, so there may be a few videos coming out soon. Um, so look forward to that. I hope you're all well. Thanks for all the support and I'll see you soon.